You know, sometimes it genuinely feels like my Tuesdays should have the Benny Hill theme playing under them. Because between work schedules, other people's schedules, sicknesses, and construction right across the street from me, everything is set against me making these episodes. However, we are off to our best start in years, so week four, bring it on. What's happening, everybody? Justin, Bridgewater's Finest on YouTube, Blockbuster underscore guy on Twitter, fueled as always by the incredible folks at Nerd Tees, and welcome to week four of my weekly NFL football pick show for the 2020 NFL regular season and postseason. And of course, before we get into anything, everybody knows obviously this story about the Tennessee Titans and the Minnesota Vikings now having to suspend all in person football operations until I believe at least Saturday because of all of the positive tests coming out of the Titans camp. I believe there's at least eight positive. Positives at this point so that's kind of hanging a dark cloud over the games this week it is entirely possible that the the two games that would be impacted there maybe both get delayed we're going to treat these games as if they're going to happen and uh spoiler alert i'm not taking either one of those teams this week which is bad news for those teams because I'm off to a heck of a good start this season. 12-3-1 in week three straight up. An excellent straight up week. Has me 33-14-1 straight up on the season. A 68.8% clip picking the games straight up. And against the spread, like I say, I'm staying hot here. 9-7 and seven in week three has me 29-18-1 against the spread so far to start the season. Far and away, the best that I've done through the first three weeks in years. Now, the totals, we went even money. We went 8 and 8 in week three. Has me 22 up and 26 down over under. Platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks. I swept the gold and silver picks with the Patriots over the Raiders 36 to 20 and the Bucks over the Broncos 28 to 10. Won both of them straight up, both of them against the spread with both of the favorites covering and both on the totals with New England and Vegas going over 48 and a half and the Bucks and the Broncos staying under 43 and a half. Now the give back there is I completely whiffed on my platinum pick with the Chargers somehow inexplicably losing to a Christian McCaffrey-less Carolina Panthers 21 to 16. That one definitely hurt. But other than that, a really stellar week on those top four picks. Taking a peek at both the Bridgewater's Finest and the Anti and Co. Pick'em pools in the Bridgewater's Finest pool. I've moved into the top 10 now, all alone in 10th place out of 38. So we picked up another manager there. 304 out of 408 possible confidence points. That's a clip of 74.5%. It's a heck of a good start to the season. And that's well over a typical championship pace. In week three, I brought in 98 of 136 possible confidence points, a clip of 72.1%. Shout out to our week three winner, however, in the pool, New Jersey tax fraud. Nice to see uh, President Trump get in on the action here too. He also went 12-3-1 like I did last week, but just managed the confidence points a bit better. Certainly wasn't putting all those points on uh, Los Angeles. 110 out of 136 possible confidence points. That's an over 80% clip and it was good enough to win week three. Trubisky for MVP, who I now believe is Nick Foles for MVP, remains the overall leader. I guess actually becomes the overall leader because Steven was the overall leader last week. 37, 10, and 1 straight up. 337 out of 408 possible confidence points. That's a clip of 82.6%. Shout out New Jersey tax fraud and Nick Foles for MVP for being the week three winners and overall leader. In the anti and co pick'em pool, which is just a straight up pool, tied for sixth place out of 33 with my 33 correct straight up picks so far this season, that clip of 68.8%. And by virtue of getting 12 of the 16 games correct, had a 75% pace in week three. 
the 75% pace was in fact good enough to win week three along with one other person who also went 12, three, and one. I believe it was Rob. So look, 12 of the 16 games correct, 75%. We definitely like that. Tensa and Gavin O'Connor remain our overall leaders with 35 correct picks out of the 48 games so far, 72.9%. Looking in on the Ante and Co. and Money in Markets survival pools, I am unfortunately DOA out of the Money in Markets pool. I am eliminated. There are now only 22 of 88 people left in that pool. And it was the Arizona Cardinals that got me, man. They dropped that game last week, a game that they absolutely should have won. They did not win, so I'm out. Now, in the Ante and Co. survival pool, that is a two-strike pool, so I am still alive, one of 20 of the 25 people still alive in that pool, but I am one of eight who sit with a single strike, took Arizona as well, didn't work out that well. And taking a peek into Fantasy Corner to see how my six fantasy football teams did in week three action, I went even money at three and three. I did extend my undefeated record in the Professionals Dynasty Fantasy Football League to three and oh with a win over Beetle Bailey. I have a week four matchup against Half Moon's Picks, which is a projected win. Now, in the NFL YouTube Prognosticators Fantasy Football League, I dropped my second straight game. This one to Geo knows fantasy. Geo, I believe, is 3-0. and He's got a heck of a team. My team simply did not show up. It was Lamar's, arguably one of Lamar's worst games as a pro, and my RB2 situation is, is a bit of a mess. Not making excuses. Geo's got a tremendous, tremendous team. That knocks me down to 1-2. and two. Remember, I'm trying to defend my championship in this league. Only six teams make the playoffs i got a lot of work to do that work's going to start with a week four matchup against chalupa batman who i believe is a prior champion in this pool but i am projected to win that matchup And I'll take this opportunity, as I always do, to remind you that if you go to the description of the video file on YouTube or the audio file on SoundCloud, iTunes, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts, you are going to find all of my results from last week, all of my straight up against the spread and over under plays for week four in the NFL. You're going to find information on joining the Bridgewater's Finest or Anti and Co. straight up pick'em pools. You're going to find information on joining the NFL YouTube Prognosticators Facebook page. Page, and you're going to find information on my great friends and sponsors at Nerd Tees. NerdTees.ca is the website for you to go to to get any of dozens and dozens of fantastic loose leaf tea blends, black tea, green tea, white tea, matcha, anything that your little heart desires. You can get that on nerdtees.ca. Hit that promo code BWFINEST. That's going to save you 15% at checkout. And you're going to get free shipping in Canada on any order over 100 bucks. Today's blend is an old stalwart of mine, Amaretto Almond Biscotti. It is tremendous, really, really flavorful. I haven't tried it cold, but it is fantastic as a hot cup of tea. And you can find your own fantastic hot cups of tea. So that's what she said. On nerdtees.ca, promo code BWFINEST. Save your money, get your free shipping, find yourself something to love, or find someone you love something to love. You can do it on nerdtees.ca. So we are late getting going here, obviously, with the recording of the week four episode, and we got a lot of injuries to get through. Let's waste no time. Let's kick things off right away with Thursday Night Football, the New York Jets playing host to the Denver Broncos, two teams that are certainly dealing with their fair share of injuries. Both of these teams still seeking their first win on the season, Denver and New York, both 0-3, Broncos being outscored on average by 8 points, 23-15, and the Jets being outscored abysmally, 31-12 so far on the season. Absolutely nothing has gone right for New York. And like we mentioned, the injury situation, they've piled up on both sides. The most recent one and the most significant one, arguably coming on the Jets' offensive line, with first-round pick Mekhi Becton injuring his shoulder. They did have an MRI, and I believe the MRI actually was resulted better than they expected it to. There's a chance that Mekhi Becton plays in this game. He would likely be limited, which would be a bit of a boon to the Broncos' pass rush. Outside of Gary Vaynerchuk and the hardcore fan bases of both of these teams, I would expect not a whole lot of eyeballs to be on this game on Thursday night. It's a good thing it's going up unopposed. But I actually like the Jets here, and I don't really think I have a great 
justification as to why I like the Jets. Like, they're the team that's dealing with the most recent injury. Other than the fact that they're at home, I mean, it, it, that's not a gigantic advantage when you're a team that's as bad as the Jets, but it's not like the Broncos are lighting the world on fire either. If I, if you're looking for upset picks, this is just one of the ones that kind of makes the most sense because it's, it's a bit of a coin flip here, and we know the upsets certainly happen. The rule of four is two and one on the season. The six underdogs won their games outright last week. I don't have great justification for this, but I'm actually going to go with the underdog Jets to get their first win of the season. Look, Broncos, at this point, you might as well tank, right? Get yourselves a heck of a draft pick. So I'm going to take the Jets and take the Jets at home. That's, I don't have a great reason, but that's what it is. Jets beat the Broncos on the line. Like I mentioned, the Jets are two point dogs at home. And if you think about it, like if they're giving, if Vegas tends to give the home team like a field goal advantage, that would have the Broncos laying minus five. If they were at home, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think these teams are very, very evenly matched. I don't think the Jets' defense is as bad as it showed so far this year. The offense, as long as they can score some points, I think they come up with the win here. They're two-point dogs. I'll take those two points. Like them to win outright. Total in the game set at 40 points. I only have this thing as like a very low 30, like barely getting to 30. So even though the number's 40, and I think it's the smallest number of the week, I'm still going to tell you to stick under on it. This is also the week I think the defenses adjust a little bit. Let's take New York 17, Denver 14. Might be a last second field goal that wins this thing. Let's go to Chicago now where the Bears begin the Nick Foles era taking on the Indianapolis Colts, who have been a shockingly good team on both sides of the football so far this year. Both of these teams obviously coming into this game, dealing with injuries from last week. This is a battle of the should-be unbeatens. Like, Indianapolis is only 2-1. and one. They should be 3-0. and oh. They've played well enough to be 3-0. and oh. They just had an absolute brain fart to lose that game, I think, in Week 1. But Colts are 2-1, and one, outscoring opponents, almost doubling them up. 28-15. to 15. This Colts defense, the secondary is fantastic. The run defense does its job. They're scoring some points, too. Bears, like we mentioned, are 3-0, and oh, however, only outscoring opponents by an average of about 4 points, 25-21. to 21. As I mentioned, both teams dealing with an injury. On the Colts' side, it's wide receiver Michael Pittman. This has got to be like the third injury to Colts wide receivers so far this season. He has a calf injury, which wound up being compartment leg syndrome. He did have surgery. Looks like he's going to be out at least a month. So, I mean, Paris Campbell cannot get back fast enough for the Colts. And on the Bears' side, it's running back Tariq Cohen, the best running back on the Chicago Bears, by the way. I said it, and I'm going to stick with it. Tariq Cohen tears his ACL on a punt return, of all things. He's done for the season. How much Nick Foles is going to be able to make up for the fact that they're missing one of their most dynamic offensive weapons, especially against this good defense, I don't think he's going to. I like the Colts in this one, even though the game is in Chicago. I'm taking Indy over the Bears. On the line, Bears are two and a half point dogs at home, which is fully understandable, but the Colts, I like them to win. It's a relatively small price to pay just by a field goal. Let's lay those two and a half points and take the Colts. Total in the game set at 45, especially with the offensive injuries on both sides. I've only got this game getting to like a mid 30. Like I think the Colts defense is going to continue to shine here, even though it is the savior, Nick Foles. I have a very complicated relationship with Nick Foles, especially for a person that's done absolutely nothing wrong to me in the past. But I think this game stays under. I've only got it in a mid 30. Let's go under 45 points in Chicago, Indianapolis. Let's go Colts 21, Bears 14. Let's go to Cincinnati now where the Bengals coming off their first almost win of the season, tying the Philadelphia Eagles last week. They're going to play host to a Jacksonville Jaguars team that's going to come into this game on the long week. Both of these teams have lost two of their first three games on the season. The Jags do have that early season win under their belt. Jacksonville being outscored 28-23 to on average on the season. The Bengals being outscored 25-22. to These are two teams that so far this year, like in the first game we talked about, kind of allergic to winning. But if you're looking for a super fun quarterback matchup, not necessarily the best quarterback play you'll see all week, but just in terms of fun. Just a fun matchup. 
it's going to be tough to beat this. Joe Burrow versus Gardner Minshew. This is a quarterback matchup I would pay money to see just because of the two, like the personalities and what we've already seen these two as capable of doing on the football field. Now, it's tough for me to say, like, I really wanted to go with Cincinnati in this matchup because Jacksonville's defense has not been good at all. But I think the fact that the Jags have the extra rest, the extra time to plan for the Bengals, it's not like the Bengals are lighting the world on fire. Even though they're at home and maybe this is a spot for Joe Burrow to get his first win, I don't think I'm taking the Bengals in this one. I think we're going to lean on the Jags who are better rested. Neither team really dealing with much for injuries, but that ever-present, awful offensive line for Cincinnati just makes it so difficult to pick with them. I'm going to go with the Jags here on the road in Cincinnati to beat the Bengals. On the line, we see the Bengals laying three points as the home favorite. I I don't necessarily get it. This feels like it should be closer to like a pick em or minus a half point or minus one. Three points is a bit much, even if I liked Cincinnati to win. I, like, I'd take the Jags plus three here. I'm definitely taking them because I like the Jags to win outright. Total in the game set at 49 points. This is a pretty close number, but I do have the game getting over 50. So we're going to go over the 49 points in Jacksonville, Cincinnati. We're going to go Jags 30, Bengals 21, at least four combined touchdowns between the two quarterbacks. Going to be a fun game. Let's go to Dallas now where the Cowboys are going to be at home taking on a Cleveland Browns team dealing with a significant loss in their secondary. And a loss in the secondary is not what you want to see or hear when you're going up against Dak Prescott and a very pass-first offensive-minded team. Uh, Cleveland 2-1 and one on the season so far, but on average they're being outscored by 4 points, 29-25, to 25, which means their wins have been close, their loss was a blowout. Meanwhile, Dallas has dropped two of their first three games. However, they still sit firmly in contention in the awful NFC East. They're only being outscored by three points on average, 32 to 29. So the offense has been better. The defense has been really bad for Dallas. Dallas should be 2-1 and one if their defense acted like it had a pulse. Like I mentioned, an injury in Cleveland's secondary, it's Denzel Ward re-aggravating the groin injury he went into week three with. No update as of right now, but this certainly feels like it would be a good spot to hold Denzel Ward out for a week. Like, it, if you keep throwing him out there with a kind of a groin injury, if he tears it, now all of a sudden you're looking at him being out for a significant amount of time. And you started the season with two wins. Like, I don't think you can afford to screw around here. I, I'm assuming he would be questionable to play, but with the Browns, you never know. Especially where the game's in Dallas, this almost wound up on my platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks for this week. Feel really good about the Cowboys here. They're healthy. The offense is playing well. I don't think Cleveland's going to keep up. Let's take Dallas at home to beat the Browns. On the line, Cowboys are four and a half point favorites at home. This feels like a pretty justified line. I'm going to lay those points. It's less than a touchdown, well less than a touchdown, in fact. And I really like Dallas in this spot. So let's take the Cowboys minus four and a half. Total in the game set at 55 and a half points. And this is one of the multitude of big totals. I believe there's like nine games this week that have totals in the 50s. It's ridiculous. So 55 and a half points is actually the largest point total that we're going to look at this week. And uh, no, sorry, it's not. It's the second largest. I think it stays under. This is a really, really close number for me. Like I've got it getting over 50 and kind of into the low, maybe even pushing the mid 50s. I think it just barely stays under on this total. We're going to go under 55 and a half points in Dallas, Cleveland. We're going to go Cowboys 30, Browns 24. Let's go to Detroit now for a battle of one and two teams. One you would expect, the other one not so much. Lions playing host to the New Orleans Saints. Saints only beginning the season one and two, and both of these teams are giving up an average of 31 points a game. So it's certainly the defenses that have been letting things down. Detroit also one and two. They've only scored 23 points a game, where at the very least, even without Michael Thomas for the last game or two, the Saints are still scoring 29 a game. 
Nothing else significant to report on the injury side. Michael Thomas gets closer to coming back as the weeks go by. Detroit is still kind of limping in their secondary. I, I, I don't see how New Orleans loses this game, even though the game's in Detroit. I'm going to take the Saints on the road in Detroit to beat the Lions. On the line, Detroit is four-point underdog at home, which would mean, I guess, if the game was in New Orleans, they'd be laying a touchdown. That still seems pretty realistic to me, even though, again, neither one of these two defenses are particularly good. I'm going to lay those points, I think, kind of like with Dallas. I feel pretty confident about the Saints here. So let's lay those four points, take New Orleans minus four. Total in the game set at 54 points. This is another close one, a real coin flip. I've got this like right around a mid 50. So it's right around this number, but I do think it jumps over by a point or two. So let's go over 54 points in New Orleans, Detroit. Let's take Saints 31, Lions 24. Let's go to Tennessee now. Tennessee Titans playing host to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And once again, we have that situation where at least eight people in the Titans organization, three players and five personnel have tested positive for COVID. They've shut down all their in-person uh, anythings all week, basically until Friday or Saturday. That really going to set them behind the eight ball here. Not to mention, again, both teams coming in with an injury situation. Tennessee's arguably a little worse than Pittsburgh's. Both of these teams come into the game looking to stay undefeated. One of these teams is going to go to 4-0, assuming they don't tie. Pittsburgh's defense has really been getting it done for them. They've scored 27 points a game, but they're only giving up 19. That's a really good defensive unit there in Pennsylvania. Tennessee, meanwhile, scoring 27 a game, but they're giving up 25. Like I mentioned, injury situation for both teams. Uh, for Pittsburgh, it's wide receiver Deontay Johnson. He's dealing with a possible concussion. He didn't return to the game last week, obviously. I would have to list him as questionable to play. The Steelers have wide receiver depth. Even if he doesn't play, I think they'll be all right. For Tennessee on the offensive line, Taylor Lewan was carted off last week with a shoulder injury. He's been given no update, but I would say he'd be questionable at best to play this week. There are some reports that are saying like, oh no, he, he might be okay to play, but that seems like an awful quick turnaround for an offensive lineman, especially for something in the upper body. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's virtually impossible to pick with the Titans here with the COVID situation that's going going around. That would be at least three players that probably won't be in their lineup this week, if not more. So they're certainly going to be looking at if this game goes through at a, you know a patchwork situation to kind of fill some spots here and there. I, I, it's almost impossible for me to take the Titans. We're going to take the Pittsburgh Steelers here. Let's take the Steelers on the road in Tennessee to beat the Titans. On the line, this line originally opened with Tennessee as a one-point favorite. It has swung all the way to Pittsburgh minus a point and a half, understandably with the situation. I like the Steelers to win. It's almost the smallest of prices to pay. So let's lay that point and a half, take Pittsburgh minus 1.5. Total in the game set at 47 points. I've only got this getting into the high 30s, maybe crossing over into 40. So we're going to stick under. Take under 47 points in Pittsburgh, Tennessee. We're going to go Steelers 26, Titans 14. Let's go to Miami now where the Dolphins fresh off of getting their first win of the season as I called they would in Jacksonville against the Jags last week. They get to come home. Your reward for getting your first win of the season is you have to play Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle looking to stay undefeated on the season, currently at 3-0, and outscoring opponents, very high-scoring games for the Seahawks so far this year. 37-29, to the average score in the Seahawks games. Miami at only at 1-2 and two on the season, but now outscoring opponents by an average score of 1 point, 23-22. Miami exited the Titans game unscathed on the injury side. Seattle can't exactly say the same for them. Running back Chris Carson, and there was, of course, that ugly, ugly Gator roll situation, which is just absolutely zero need for that in the game against Dallas. And, and then for Mike McCarthy to turn around and be like, well, I don't think there was any bad intent. I mean, he grabbed the guy's leg and Gator rolled him. Like, I don't know what other intent you could really have in that situation, but then again, I'm not that player and I've never played pro football. So take that for what it's worth. Anyway, Carson has a first 
uh, first grade knee sprain. There's been no update on him. They're saying he could play, but that seems really, really doubtful to me. So, hey, Carlos Hyde season. Two thumbs up. It's really difficult for me to look at the Miami Dolphins defense as better than anybody's. But look, after that 31-13 smashing in week three, they've had two games where they've only given up 21 points or fewer. That defense not as bad as it's been in years past and certainly playing better statistically anyway than the Seattle Seahawks. And there, I think I honestly genuinely think there's a number of things that are kind of leaning in Miami's direction for this game. Call me stupid, and I'm okay with that. This is my upset of the week. I have the Miami Dolphins at home upsetting the Seattle Seahawks. There's almost one big upset week in and week out, and this is the big upset for me this week. I've got the Dolphins at home. This just feels like one of those games, like a Dolphins-Patriots game, that the Patriots would be favored by like 15 points, and somehow Miami would come up and win on like a last second, whatever, how do you do? Kind of feels like that again, and Seattle, look, their defense is incredibly susceptible, not playing very well. Yes, Russell Wilson is off to an all-time great start at the quarterback position, and yes, I certainly expect that to continue, but overall, top to bottom... I'm taking the Dolphins in the massive upset. On the line, Miami is a six and a half point dog at home, and that's totally justified. It is absolutely justified for the Seahawks to be laying that many points, but I'm taking Miami plus six and a half because I like the Dolphins to win it outright. Total in the game set at 54 and a half points. This is very close. It's an absolute 50 50 coin flip. This is right around where I've got this game capped. I'm going to go over on it because, again, we've just seen what Russell Wilson has been able to do points-wise. Let's take over 54.5 points in Miami, Seattle. We're going to go Dolphins 28, Seahawks 27. Massive upset for Miami. And in yet another Benny Hill moment, the freezer behind me just turned on, which only makes sense, but we are going to power through that. Let's go to Tampa Bay, where the Buccaneers are going to play host to the LA Chargers, both of these teams dealing with an injury. Chargers come into this game at 1-2 and two on the season, being outscored by a couple of points on average, 19-17. to 17. Their defense is playing very well, they're just getting nothing from the offensive side of the ball. Meanwhile, Tom Brady and the Bucks off to a 2-1 and one start to the season, outscoring opponents by a full touchdown, 27-20. to 20. Now, like I mentioned, injury concerns on both sidelines. The Chargers, it's on their offensive line. Offensive tackle Brian Balaga has injured his back. No update on him yet. I would say he's questionable at best. I feel like he dealt with back injuries when he was playing in Green Bay. So this could be a chronic, uh, bit of a chronic issue for him. And on Tampa Bay's side, once again, it's wide receiver Chris Godwin. Second significant injury in a couple of weeks, I think. Didn't he have a concussion a couple of weeks ago? This time he injured his hamstring, another soft tissue injury. No update update as of right now but kind of feels doubtful to play the way they're talking everybody seems to be sort of talking up scotty miller this week so i would expect scotty miller to have a more pronounced role i would expect mike evans to have the pronounced role in this game and that's going to be tough because that's a really good chargers defense on the other side uh between these two teams there is one offense that i trust and one offense that i don't Uh, I'll let you guess which one is which. I'm going to take the offense that I trust playing in their own building. Both of these defenses have played statistically fairly well this year, but I'm going to take the better offense. That's the Tampa Bay Bucks. Let's take the Bucks at home to beat the Chargers. On the line, Tampa Bay's laying seven and a half points as a home favorite. That's just too many points for me. I can't lay seven and a half points against a defense as good as the Chargers have played so far this year. So I'm going to take those points, hedge my bets a little bit, take the Chargers plus 7.5. Total in the game set at 43 and a half. I only have this game capped at like a low to mid 30. So if you're going to give me a 40, I got to stick under on it. Let's go under 43 and a half points in Los Angeles, Tampa Bay. We're going to go Bucks 17, Chargers 16. Very, very close game. Let's go to Carolina now where the Panthers are fresh off of that surprising win last week. They're going to play an Arizona Cardinals team that, like I said, really let me down in the survival pool. 
Now, aside from that game last week, Arizona's been playing pretty darn well so far this season, especially on the defensive side, because that defense has been garbage for years. Arizona 2-1 and one on the season, outscoring opponents by an unconverted touchdown, 26-20. to 20. Meanwhile, Carolina, that was their first win of the year last week, all being outscored so far on the season, 27-23. to 23. No other significant injury concerns for either team coming out of last week. Obviously, we're not going to see Christian McCaffrey in this game. We're probably not going to see Christian Kirk in this game for the Arizona Cardinals. Um, this is this is one's actually tough. This one's this feels like a bit of a trap, and I don't think I can trust the Arizona Cardinals. I'm uh, I, there's certain games that I'm just like I, I'm I'm kind of willing to get wrong because I just I can't give the team that much credit and I feel like this is another one of those that I think it's genuinely I think it's close I think Carolina showed me more on the offensive side than I was expecting without Christian McCaffrey Mike Davis had a monster game receiving I expect that to happen again I'm actually going to take the Panthers in the upset here let's take Carolina at home to beat Arizona on the line here, Arizona's laying three and a half points uh, as a road favorite. So uh, again, this is another one of those lines that like, even if you like Arizona to win, I don't think you can trust them after that game last week. I would take the Carolina plus three and a half one way or the other. I like the Panthers to win, so I'm going to take that three and a half points. Total in the game set at 52 for the game. Uh, this I got this at like a high 40, maybe pushing a 50. It's close, but I'm going to stick under on this number. I think a, a Christian McCaffrey involvement in this game, I think you'd have a higher number, and I genuinely think it would go over because I think you'd find the end zone. So I think we're going to stick under on this one. We're going to go under 52 points in Arizona, Carolina. Take the Panthers 26, Cardinals 24. Go to Houston now where the Texans at 0-3 are going to face a fellow 0-3 team that has really not looked any better than they have, quite frankly, the Minnesota Vikings. And once again, we're talking about that potential COVID situation from the Tennessee Titans. Now, nobody from Minnesota has tested positive yet, but... Even so, they've still shut down all their in-person activities. They're not necessarily going to be practicing in person for a lot of this week. It really sets them behind the eight ball, having to go on the road to Houston. Minnesota being outscored on the season 34-25. to That defense has been absolutely abysmal so far this year. And Houston... Kind of the same thing, being outscored 32 to 19. That offense, man, they're missing DeAndre Hopkins uh, in news to absolutely no one. I said it off the top of the episode, I'm not picking either Tennessee or Minnesota this week. So obviously I'm going with the Houston Texans to get their first win of the season at home. Let's take Houston to beat the Vikings. On the line, the Texans are laying three and a half points as a home favorite. I will be laying that as well. It's a bit of a larger price to pay. You got to buy that extra half point off the field goal. But I don't know what Minnesota Vikings team I'm going to see this week. And I don't know what team I'm going to see week in and week out. So we're going to lay that three and a half points on the Texans. Total in the game set at 54 and a half points. I've got this at like a high 40, maybe getting into a 50, but it's enough for me to stick under on the total. We're going to stay under 54 and a half points in Houston, Minnesota. Let's go Texans 27, Vikings 23. Let's go to Kansas City now, a marquee matchup here. The Kansas City Chiefs on the short week, having just beaten Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens last night on Monday Night Football, they get to come home and play Cam Newton and the New England Patriots. Old school meets new school in terms of these highly mobile quarterbacks. These two teams have combined 5-1 and one so far on the season. The Chiefs outscoring their opponents by an average of 10 points on the year, 30-20. to 20. The Patriots, who sit at 2-1, and one, outscoring opponents 29-22. to 22. Both of these offenses putting up the points, despite the fact that, like, at least on Cam Newton's side, that first week, he didn't really do much through the air. They've certainly found a way, however, to translate everything into points. No major injury situation here on either sideline. As far as I'm concerned, this comes down to which of these two football teams is the better team. I think Kansas City is the better offense. I think they're the better defense. I think they're the more dangerous special teams. I'm going to take the Chiefs in their own building. Let's take Kansas City at home, even on the short week, to beat the Patriots. 
On the line, though, the Chiefs laying a full touchdown at home against the Patriots, and I think with two teams where the defenses have been this good in both situations, uh, seven points, even though it's Kansas City. And I'm pretty sure they've probably covered the spread as favorites uh, every game, or fairly close to it. I just, I gotta take those seven points. It's just a bit too much for me. If this number was four and a half, five, maybe, but seven points, just a little too much for me. Let's take the Patriots plus seven. Total in the game set at 54 points. I think we'll see it go over. This is a very close number, kind of a coin flip. We're going to go over 54 points in New England, Kansas City. Let's take Chiefs 28, Patriots 27. Let's see a heck of a football game here. And the last game we're going to look at before we get into the platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks for week four sees the Las Vegas Raiders at home to a Buffalo Bills team that may be down one of their top wide receivers. Bills looking to extend their undefeated record to four and zero oh this week. They're outscoring opponents by uh, five points, thirty-one to twenty-six. I would have expected the defense to play a little better than this, but they've been banged up to start the season. They had a game or two there where they didn't have either one of their like elite starting linebackers. So look, they're off to a bit of a slow start. That Buffalo defense will certainly rebound. The Raiders have won two of their first three games. They're scoring 29 points a game. That's great. It's the defensive side that is an absolute letdown for the Raiders, which I probably could have told you preseason. They're being outscored, despite the fact that they're 2-1, and one, by a single point, 30-29. to 29. Defense has to get better. Now, as we mentioned, the Bills may be down one of their starting wide receivers. That is John Brown. He came up with a calf injury last week. He had been dealing with an ankle as well. He did not return to the game last week. There's been no significant update, but Coach McDermott says they're still evaluating, and that's basically a paraphrased, pretty well direct quote. I'd have to consider him doubtful for this game. I'd be very surprised if we see John Brown suit up in Las Vegas. Now, look, I'm not saying that the Raiders have no home field advantage here in that big, gorgeous, beautiful new building. There are going to be teams that are going to be a little ha, be a little awestruck about that. This Buffalo Bills team, and especially the way their quarterback is playing, he don't care. If you're not going to put a good defense in front of him, he is going to shred you. Allen all day, let's take Buffalo on the road in Vegas to beat the Raiders. On the line, Raiders are a three-point underdog at home. Makes perfect sense. Buffalo's a better football team, top to bottom. I like Buffalo to win. It's a relatively small price to pay at a full field goal. Let's lay those points. Take Buffalo minus three. Total in the game set at 52 points. I've got this game at like a mid-50. This is kind of close, but I do think it's going to go over. I've got Buffalo getting to 30 points on their own. Raiders probably score a garbage time touchdown to make this somewhat close, but we're going to go over on this. Let's go over 52 points in Buffalo, Vegas. We're going to take Bills 31, Raiders 24. Here we go, folks. Platinum, gold, silver, and bronze picks for week four in the NFL. We're going to start, as always, with the bronze pick, where I'm 3-0 and o straight up. I have not lost a bronze pick straight up so far. Only 1-2 and two against the spread, but I am 2-1 and one on the totals. And this sees the Baltimore Ravens on the road going to Washington to take on the Washington football team named TBDs. Uh, Baltimore obviously coming in on the short week, having just played Kansas City last night. Washington limps into this game down their top rookie. That was the Ravens' first loss of the season last night on Monday Night Football. They are still dominating opponents so far this year, outscoring them by a pace of 30-19. to 19. Washington is 1-2 and two on the season, being outscored by an unconverted touchdown, 27-21. to 21. And like I mentioned, Washington will likely be down Chase Young. He injured his groin. However, they said they dodged a bullet after the MRI, but no update on his playing status. Look, kid gloves here, guys. You're going to be in this division. This division is bad. Eight games is probably going to win this division. So look, it's only week four. Play it safe with your number two overall pick. That's probably not a bad idea. So I'd be shocked if I see Chase Young. If Chase Young plays in this game, it's an awful management decision by Washington. I'll go that far and say that. Uh, should come as no shock to anybody that I'm taking the Baltimore Ravens to win this football game. Let's take Baltimore on the road in Washington to beat the football team. On the line, the football team is laying, sorry, is taking 13 points. 
Man, oh man. It's not a division game. This is this is genuinely tough. Because I think this game's going to be low scoring. Like, the total here is set at 51, and I it doesn't make sense. Washington's defense hasn't been terrible this year. They're giving up, sure. They're giving up 27 points a game, but like... In terms of yardage totals, it has not been easy to get yards on Washington. Then again, if they don't have their best pass rusher, this one's really tough. I'm going to go with my gut here, and my gut says even though it's 13 points, my gut's telling me to lay them, and I think that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm actually changing what I have here on paper. What I had on paper was Washington covering that plus 13. I'm changing that as we speak. I'm going to lay those points, take the Ravens on the road minus the 13. Now, if Chase Young does play, maybe they cover that number, but again, it would be a horrible management decision as far as I'm concerned. Total in the game set at 51 points. Like I said, I'm I'm staying under on this. I've only got this at a high 30. I don't have this game getting to 40. I don't know what I'm going to get from Washington on the offensive side against Baltimore. I don't think Baltimore is going to put up 50 points on their own. I don't think that serves them any purpose. So we're going to stay under on this one. Let's go under 51 points in Baltimore, Washington. Baltimore straight up. We're going to hammer Baltimore minus 13. Kind of hold our nose while we do it against the spread in a game that stays under 51 points. That is your bronze pick. Baltimore 27, Washington 10. My silver pick, we're in 3-0 and o straight up and 2-1, and one, both against the spread and over under. So we're having a good start to the season on the silver pick. Sees the San Francisco 49ers at home playing host to the Philadelphia Eagles. Both of these teams entering with, wouldn't you guess it, injury situations. The Eagles still somehow bizarrely looking for their first win of the season. They've really started off poorly and really underscored by that tie last week against Joe Burrow and the Bengals being outscored on the season 29 to 20. So the offense isn't doing it and the defense isn't doing it. Meanwhile, San Francisco, despite their slew of injuries, dominant last week, getting back on the board with their second win of the year and almost doubling up teams in terms of the scoring, 29 to 15 on average. Now, like I mentioned, injury situation on both sidelines here. For the Eagles, it's tight end Dallas Goddard. He has a small fracture in his ankle. He was placed on IR today, which means he will miss at least three weeks, if not more, depending on how that heals up. And for the 49ers, it's tight end Jordan Reed, which is a larger injury than it feels like because we, you know, the George Kittle situation is Kittle ready to roll. He has a combined ankle and knee injury. Coach Shanahan confirming he has a sprained MCL. He's likely going to miss six to eight weeks. So that's the majority of Jordan Reed's season right there. And that just gives me PTSD flashbacks to when Jordan Reed was a constant injury situation on my fantasy football teams shouldn't shock anybody that i'm hammering the 49ers in this game look they're just uh, such a good football team they're so deep Uh, nick mullins had a ton of passing yards last week he showed that he's more than capable in this position and he can beat an eagles defense that's really not doing much of anything right now so we're definitely on the 49ers to beat the eagles On the line, the Niners are laying a full touchdown at home. That number is fully justified in this situation, and I am laying all of those points. Take the Niners, minus 7. Total in the game set at 45 points. I've only got this at a mid-30, so I don't think we're going to see a ton from the Eagles offensively either because the Niners' defense is really good. So we're going to stay under 45 points in Philly, San Francisco. Niners straight up. We're going to hammer the Niners minus seven against the spread in a game that stays under 45 points. That is the silver pick. Niners 22, Eagles 13. My gold pick where I am two and one straight up and against the spread. Only one and two on the total. So we're looking to turn that around this week. Sees my Green Bay Packers at home playing host to the Atlanta Falcons and Atlanta Oh boy, um, I'm I'm 100% on board the Fire Dan Quinn train. Change needs to happen here for Atlanta. Certainly doesn't help that they're probably going to be down another one of their offensive weapons this week. And Green Bay has been utterly curb stomping teams. 
A battle of the winless versus the undefeated. Atlanta 0-3. Despite scoring 30 points a game, that's how atrocious this defense is right now. They're giving up 36. Meanwhile, the Packers unbeaten at 3-0, scoring 41 points a game. Now, their defense hasn't been spectacular. They've been giving up an average of four touchdowns worth of points. They're, you know, they're being out, or they're outscoring, rather, 41-28. to So I'd like to see more on the defensive side for Green Bay. But you're looking at a matchup here with the Falcons where we don't know if Julio Jones is 100%, and we don't know whether Russell Gage will be playing at all for the Falcons. He had a concussion in that game last week. No update so far. We have to consider him questionable heading into the game this week, whether they have Russell Gage or not. Maybe this is you look at this as the ultimate trap game, kind of like how I look like look at like Miami and Seattle. I just I, I don't see it. I certainly don't see it. We're definitely on the Packers in this one. Let's take Green Bay to beat Atlanta rather convincingly. On the line, Packers are laying 7.5 points as a home favorite. Of course they are. It's 100% justified laying all of those points on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Green Bay, minus 7.5. Total in the game set at 58 points, which is the largest total of the week. And you have to go over on it because Atlanta's defense is garbage and Green Bay's hasn't exactly been great. So I've got this game at like a mid-60. So this gets over 58, I think, fairly comfortably. Let's go over 58 points in Atlanta, Green Bay. Packers straight up. We're going to hammer the Packers minus 7.5 against the spread in a game that goes over 58 points. That is my gold pick. Packers 40 Falcons 26 and the platinum pick where I am two and one both straight up and against the spread and like the gold pick only one and two on the total sees the Los Angeles Rams at home playing host to the New York Giants with yet another injury. Giants are still looking for their first win on the season at 0-3, and, and they are being doubled up on the score sheet 26-13 to on average. Meanwhile, the Rams have won two of their first three games. They're scoring 30 points a game, so they're definitely getting it done both through the air and on the ground. Daryl Henderson had a great game last week, and they're only giving up 24 points a game. You'd maybe like to see that be a little bit better, but certainly not terrible this early in the year where we've seen so many points. Like we said, injury concern for the Giants. Safety Jabril Peppers, he's injured his ankle. They said he won't need surgery, but then in the same breath are like, hey, he might play this week. So I don't know how those two things kind of equate to each other. I would have to consider him highly questionable to play in this game. And especially if they're down one of their top safeties, arguably their number one safety. Uh, I think Jared Goff and those wide receivers are going to have a very fun time playing the New York Giants, especially where the game is in LA. Let's take the Rams at home to beat the Giants. On the line, however, the Rams are favored by 13 points. They're getting the Baltimore Washington treatment. Now, this one feels way grosser. Baltimore, like, I fully get it. The Rams, I only kind of get it. Because, yeah, the Giants are bad. Like, they're just bad, man. And sure, you're scoring 30 points a game on average. But 13 points is almost two full touchdowns. And I hate laying that many points. And I feel disgusting that that's exactly what I'm going to do. Because the Rams are going to utterly destroy the Giants this week. So I'm going to lay those 13 points and try not to vomit. Total in the game set at 48 points. I've only got this at like a mid 40, but who knows what you get from the Giants offensively against a fairly good defense. So I think we got to stick under on this one. Stay under 48 points in Los Angeles, New York. Rams straight up. We're going to hammer all Hammer the Rams. I, oh, God, gross. Minus 13 against the spread in a game that stays under 48 points. That is my platinum pick. Rams 31, Giants 15. There you go, folks. Our picks are in for week four of the 2020 NFL season. It is time now for the patented comment of the week. Comment of the week from the week three episode goes to a new commenter, I believe. I don't think I've ever called this person's name before. King Clamps HG. And I have to give them credit because they predicted a score in the uh, Bears-Falcons game, which was really, really close to what the actual final score was. So I got to shout them out for it. I think Bears win the game 28 to 24. They won the game 30 to 26. So they were only two points off each way. 
King Clamps continues, the Bears secondary has been playing really good, but yes, I know the argument with them not playing very good receivers. But Kyle Fuller is still a pro bowler and will probably be on Julio all game. Now, I replied to this comment and said, very fair. I like the Bears. I think they're closer to making some noise than people give them credit for. I certainly didn't think that kind of incredible, uh, just absolute collapse by the Falcons was incoming. But the fact that it was, Chicago still had to get the job done and they did get the job done. It's going to be tough sledding for them without Tariq Cohen. I will certainly say that. But King Clamps HG, yours is the comment of the week from the week three episode. And good call on that final score. There we go, folks. The week four episode. It is now in the books. Thank you very much for your patience while I get this thing out late in the day on Tuesday. I'm hoping we can get back to a more regular schedule of getting this show recorded. I much prefer recording it Tuesday mornings so I can get it out to you by like Tuesday afternoon. I like that idea of someone being able to come home from work and listen to this show on their commute Tuesday coming home from work. That's that's what I like and that's we want to try to get back to that for sure. Just take some conversations with some people that can help make that decision a reality and we will try to do that here in the coming weeks thank you so much for listening that's it for me justin bridgewater's finest on youtube blockbuster underscore guy on twitter fueled as always by the incredible folks at nerd tees enjoy the games in week four i'm wishing the best for the tennessee titans as well as the minnesota vikings i hope this COVID outbreak can kind of be mitigated here hopefully the nfl's policies and procedures are on point like the nhl's are Enjoy the games this week. See you again in week number five. Man, we're just chugging along this year, aren't we?